Hi everyone, it's Pokadan Sada here, and today we have in-depth learning about Open Governance, one of the most important updates of the Pokadot network currently. And in this video today, we we'll explore details about Open Governance, like why Pokadot changes to this model, what it is and how it works, and more to come. Now let's check it out. First, we need to keep in mind that the vision and the mission of the Polkadot is to make Web3 mass adoption with decentralization as a top priority criteria. Polkadot aims to be a democratic blockchain of the people, by the people, and for the people. And to pursue this goal, one of the Polkadot's first changes was to convert its governance model to open governance. And accordingly, all decisions are approved by community voting. And this transformation will help promote the core values of the Web3 that Polkadot always aims for, such as upgradable. With Polkadot, decisions can be automatically enacted, which makes upgrades to Polkadot, its parachains, and even the governance model itself adaptable to changing conditions indefinitely, a unique proposition for Web3. Independent. On Polkadot, decisions are made by the community, not by the centralized bodies or first-class citizens. While tokens can be freely acquired, the initial allocation was designed, so no single investor controls a large portion. And unstoppable. By giving decision-making power to a decentralized community, Polkadot delivers another first in Web3. It cannot be stopped, even by its creators. Alright, we just talked about the mission and vision of Polkadot as well as the core values of the OpenGov model. So, what actually is Open Governance? Let's find out right now. This new model represents the evolutionary leap of the Polkadot governance system, envisioning a decentralized, open, efficient, and forward-looking blockchain. It introduces a realm where all token holders actively participate in shaping Polkadot trajectory. We can simply understand that open governance is the transition from group voting, Polkadot Council, and a fellowship to community voting. Based on that, all DOT token holders, even though just holding one DOT, have the right to participate in, in voting for all proposals on the Polkadot governance. And this innovation aims to attract and involve more skilled individuals in governance. By embracing ecosystem-wide consensus for all decisions, Polkadot has truly transformed into a DAO. This shift ensures that every participant holds the right to contribute, and every contribution carries equal significance, regardless of the scale. This egalitarian approach fosters a robust and flourishing ecosystem. Well, the transition from Governance v1 to Governance v2 has ushered in an era of community strength. Designed to be flexible and adaptable, Polkadot governance allows for changes to be made quickly and efficiently, as well as brings more benefits, such as deterring bad actors to make bad proposals, less backlog and faster processing, more accessible for the community, more decentralization, serving the community demands, and more ways to cancel bad requests. The Polkadot Treasury is a great chance to financially support incubating new creations, improvements, or proposals to make the ecosystem better. And with the move to the open governance mechanism, it's easier for all Polkadot community members to propose their ideas and convince the DOT token holders to support to execute those ideas. The process to submit a Treasury proposal is in steps as follows. Step 1. Start a discussion about our proposal with the community. Step 2. Collect feedback to finalize our proposal. Step 3. Check our proposal carefully and thoroughly. And Step 4. Submit it on-chain. Polkadot Insider will release a detailed video on how to submit an on-chain proposal in the near future, so stay tuned. Alright, let's get back to Step 5. If the proposal is approved, let's start working on it and do not forget to report the whole process to the community. And after submitting an on-chain proposal, our proposal will be a referendum. To be enacted, it must pass through three stages. The first step is the lead in period. This is where proposals are submitted and referenda begins. 
Next is the decision period. This is when the real action takes place. And final is the enactment period. That is the overall life cycle of a proposal. Now let's break down all things in details. Okay, the first stage, the lead-in period, is to submit a proposal and begin a public vote. After the community discussion phase and receiving feedback, a proposal can be submitted for a public vote. And most projects choose to go through tracks of small tipper, big tipper, small spender, medium spender, big spender, and treasurer. The voting period is determined by the proposal tracks, as we can see on the screen. The proposer needs to pay a decision deposit when submitting the proposal. If not, the proposal cannot be directly approved even if it has a high number of votes. The next stage is the deciding period. It's time for all DOT token holders to start to vote. If a public vote meets the community's approval and support criteria, based on the number of affirmative votes and the ratio of supportive votes to the total possible vote, it can be truly approved. For a referendum to pass, the support and approval line should be greater than the threshold for the track for the confirmation period. This process consists of two stages, deciding and confirming. The deciding stage lasts a maximum of 28 days. If at any point within those 28 days, both the approval and support reach the approval threshold, the vote proceeds to the next stage, the confirmation period. The confirmation period is determined by the track parameters, as we can see on the screen. And during this time, if the ratios of approval and support for the vote remain above the approval threshold, the referendum can be formally approved. Whether a public vote can be approved can be observed by monitoring the threshold curve during the deciding period. Alright, let's move on to the final stage, which is the enactment period. The duration of this stage is set by the proposer, and this stage cannot be shorter than a specified date in the referendum's track, but can be extended. We can refer to the information on the screen for the main enactment period of each track. Fundamentally, OpenGov operates on the basis of a positivist legal order, allowing for peaceful and legitimate resolution of disputes in a diverse society without relying on external sources, such as morality or politics, to prove its legitimacy. The launch of open governance is opening a new revolution in blockchain governance which is emphasized by the following features. First and foremost, decentralization. There are no first-class citizens in a new governance system. In Polkadot's open governance, any DOT token holders can participate in governing the network, including making decisions on changes of varying scales and fiscal expenditures. Next up, fast and efficient. There is no need to wait in line now because Polkadot introduces multiple governance tracks that allow the community to vote on thousands of proposals at any time. Open and transparent. There are no power struggles. Flexible voting delegation promotes participation. And the introduction of the innovative conviction voting system allows members to increase their voting power by declaring the duration they are willing to lock their digital assets. Last but not least, future-oriented. Hard forts? No, we don't need it, because the Polkadot network enables all token holders to directly participate in on-chain decision-making and automatic execution for the first time, making non-fort upgrades a reality. Polkadot and Power Chains can seamlessly upgrade and always stay up to date. Alright guys, above is a detailed explanation video about Polkadot Open Governance, one of the biggest and most critical updates at present. And if you really enjoyed the video, do not forget to like, share, and subscribe to Polkadot Insider for more insightful, interesting videos. Bye, see you next time.